feel like I've forgotten something. Got a lot going on. But we're going to talk about smooth muscle. Okay, the last couple of weeks we've looked at skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle. So we've got to talk about smooth muscle to round it out. But I think there's a lot less to talk about. So this should be fairly quick. Probably not brief, but quick. Um, skeletal muscle was the muscle that we could choose to control. Voluntary muscle. Um, often moves bones. And if you look along... The, the width of the cells, you could see that there were stripes, so the, that was a striated muscle. We looked at cardiac muscle, cardiac muscle was also striated, had those stripes running on the width of the muscle fibres, the muscle cells. And cardiac muscle is an involuntary muscle, you can't think and choose to move your cardiac muscle. Smooth muscle is also involuntary muscle, you can't choose to move your smooth muscle, we find it throughout the body, um, it's not striated. All right, smooth muscle, let's have a look. So smooth muscle, I mean, it's a great building block. So a lot of things in the body are built from it, but it's also able to, well, it's muscle, right? So these cells can change their length and generate force. We've seen a lot of muscle already because we've worked our way through the gastrointestinal tract. We've looked at the respiratory tract, have we? We've, we've looked at all sorts of things. So you find smooth muscle in the gastrointestinal tract, in the respiratory tract, in the reproductive tract, in the urinary tract. You find it in the muscles that control the iris and change the shape of the lens. You find it in sphincters. Not all the sphincters of the body, but a lot of the sphincters of the body are made of smooth muscle. Uh, they keep things in when you're supposed to keep it in and they let it out when you don't mind it coming out. And oh, um, the hairs in your skin, the erector pili muscle that can lift your hairs up when you get cold or frightened, that's smooth muscle as well. Hey, if you're good, I probably, I'm, I've got hair, a, a section of hairy skin somewhere. <clears throat> but um, let's look then at the large bowel. This is... Some colon. Uh, the large bowel has got um, a very muscular wall, two layers. There's a, an inner circular layer running around the tube and an outer longitudinal layer, and that is how food is propelled along the tube. Um, so this is a good, a good tissue to look at for smooth muscle. We me find it all the way along the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, so it should be quite a good example. Uh, oh. Well, that's, there we go, that's the muscle bit. A um, bit more light, bit of focus. Where is that bit of dirt? Oh, okay, it's just outside my field of view. Oh, I should probably clean the slide. Let's clean the slide. So there are the two layers of muscle. So the muscle at that end, this is a longitudinal section, um, are running the length of the large bowel, and the layer of muscle there is running around the large bowel. Jump up to a higher power. So smooth muscle, we find individual cells. This is a good section because we can see the nuclei. It's very difficult to see, jump up to, this is 20 times, very difficult to see individual smooth muscle cells. Um, it's quite difficult to see individual muscle cells, but we can see the nuclei quite nicely. The nuclei give us an idea of where the cells are. So you can see kind of, um, there's a blood vessel in the middle there, but you can see cells linking together, running in the same direction, running across from left to right here. Uh, smooth muscle cells are individual cells. They're des described as fusiform, which means spindle shaped. What on earth is a spindle? We're talking about um, spinning wheels. So a spindle is a bit of wood that's fatter in the middle and narrower at the ends. And Anyway, uh, so it's spindle shaped, it's fusiform shaped, which means that these cells are maybe um, 10 microns wide at the fattest point uh, in the middle, and then they taper, they're narrower at the ends, um, and then they're all packed together um, against each other like that. Um, the nucleus is in the middle, and if I jump up to a 40 times objective lens and throw some more light at it and put it into focus. 
So we can see lots of cells running from left to right. Like I say, it's very difficult to see their edges and they are very tightly stuck together because like the cardiac muscle, when the, these cells contract, so they also have actin and myosin in them. Uh, the method by which they change their length and generate force is a little bit different to striated muscle. The actin and myosin fibrils, um, micro filaments are running in lots of different directions. They're not all running parallel and overlapping, which is why we don't see that striated appearance. Um, so that when these muscle cells contract, they're tightly stuck to get to each other, so they all contract and pull on each other, pull with each other. They don't pull apart from each other, they pull each other along. So you can have a length of muscle then that, that acts um, as a unit, a coordinated unit. These cells are often 20 microns to maybe 200 microns in length. Um, they get longer in some areas of the body, like the uterus, they can get longer than that. Um, but we can see, oh, we're starting to see a little bit of individuality there. You can see those very long, they get called cigar-shaped nuclei. We can even see the nucleolus in the middle of them. Um, but yeah, so uh, smooth muscle cells, just, I'm not going to call them boring, but they don't look quite as interesting as striated muscle. But they're, they're, they're cool in their own right, they've got their own thing, right? Ooh, can we see, I think we can see a little bit of shape in there, right? We can, we can get a sense of some of those individual cells. Now, these cells are also linked by gap junctions, like the cardiac myocytes were. So uh, when these cells depolarize, when the membrane depolarizes, when we have an action potential passing across this cell, causing the cell to contract, change its length and generate force, a gap junction is a joint between cells that lets small molecules and ions pass from one cell to the next. So when one smooth muscle cell depolarizes, the cells that it is connected to by gap junctions will also be triggered to contract, to depolarize their cell membranes, which means that the contraction is it's carried along a series of muscle cells. So they all act as a coordinated unit. So they're stuck together tightly uh, and they can trigger action potentials in neighboring cells that they're connected to. So this is how they all work together as a functional unit. The other fun thing about smooth muscle cells is that, yeah, they are innervated by the nervous system, by neurons, by the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions of the autonomic nervous system. So sympathetic and parasympathetic neurons are motor neurons innervating smooth muscle. And they can cause contraction. They can trigger um, an action potential which then travels around regions of the tissue. Um, but hormones can also have an effect on smooth muscle, and so can uh, other chemicals. So hormones like what? Estrogen, oxytocin, um, adrenaline, um, and then other chemicals like nitric oxide, prostaglandins. Um, so these cells can be triggered to contract or triggered to get longer, relax, by not just the nervous system, but by, by other chemicals that can be sent around the body. Um, and they also have a, um, a stress relaxation response. So if you imagine that these smooth muscle cells are making the wall of the bladder, as the bladder fills with urine and these cells get stretched, they respond by generating some force, generating some tension, but then over time they relax, so they get longer, but continue to generate that tension as the bladder fills. So they maintain the shape of the organ, they stop it from overfilling, they kind of manage all of these pressures within the body, and of course when the bladder is filled to a certain point where the stretch receptors decide it really needs to be emptied right now, and then the sphincters are opened, the detrusor muscle, the smooth muscle will contract and help push the urine out through the urethra. Um, so these are smooth muscle cells um, looking along the length of the smooth muscle cell, so in a longitudinal section. 
Um, and if we then look at the transverse section, if we can find a nice bit, it's a little bit folded this. Um, but um, yeah, again, it looks kind of uninteresting. I don't know. Um, <laughs> we can see lots of nuclei. We can see lots of pink of the um, muscle cells. Look at the shapes of the nuclei there as well. That's quite strange, isn't it? See how they're quite squared off. Um, so these are smooth muscle cells cutting transverse sections. So this is muscle running around the tube that's being cut, cut through like that. And um, yeah, we see lots of nuclei, we see lots of pink. Just kind of looks like smooth muscle, really. Um, yeah. Uh, transverse section, longitudinal section. I think in that longitudinal section there, we can get a sense of some of the actin and myosin filaments. Other cells around and about there is, of course, connective tissue, and there's blood vessels and lymphatics, and we'll find nervous tissue. Um, because smooth muscle, just like skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle, needs good blood supply, needs to be innervated by nerves and uh, find lymphatic vessels and whatnot. Am I, am I just stretching this out now? Sorry. The other fun thing that some smooth muscle cells is they can just spontaneously depolarize. Um, you know how the sinoatrial node in the heart, um, the cells there just spontaneously depolarize and that's what makes your heart beat. Those aren't smooth muscle cells, but smooth muscle cells can do the same thing sometimes. They can just spontaneously depolarize and trigger contractions. Anyway, smooth muscle, we very much take it for granted throughout the body. Um, would you like to look at some hairy skin? <laughs> hairy skin. Um, why am I showing you this? Oh, I think it's because most smooth muscle in the body is hidden. You don't really see it, you're not really aware of it, you don't see any signs of it, but you can see your hairs on your skin, and I think you've probably experienced your hairs standing on end, and next time when it's cold you'll see your hair standing on end, so I can demonstrate some smooth muscle that's doing that. Um, okay, what do we got? Uh, bom, bom, bom. Oh, this is a... Colourful section, always a lot going on in hairy skin. That's a bit bright for you, isn't it? Um, so, that there is a hair follicle. Um, there's a sebaceous gland secreting into it. Uh, so we want a bit of an angle. Oh, see that angle there? That's smooth muscle. Those angles, those are smooth muscle. Kind of get it joined up. Well, that's okay, isn't it? Right, so there's that's a hair follicle. You know, it's... Bit of it's missing because of the plane of section, the way it's being cut. But um, this here, oh, that's very colourful. This here is the smooth muscle that's running to the hair. And when this is triggered to contract, um, will cause your hairs to stand on end. Smooth muscle in the skin. So we're seeing the green, this is a slightly different stain section. So the green is connective tissue. So you can see all the connective tissue that's helping hold the smooth muscle together. Um, and you can see some cigar shaped nuclei and you can see a lot of red, the red's the muscle. We're losing the end there just because of the plane of section this is running through. Um, but yeah, smooth muscle, we can see, I think we can just about see some individual smooth muscle cells there. Can you imagine? So it's, it's running through the tissue and it's just, we've cut. You know, it's like a rod of smooth muscle and the way this has been cut means we only see a bit of it. We don't see the whole thing because that's the nature of cutting sections and putting them on slides. We need to cut thin sections so we, sh we can shine light through it and see the cells. Oh, that's so pretty. Um, but it means we only observe, we're looking at the body in two dimensions. Looks like we're a 2D being trying to figure out the 3D world. Anyway, yeah, it's cool. 
So, you know, we've only got so many tissues in the body, so if we're looking at muscle and trying to work out what type of muscle it is, that's what smooth muscle looks like. It just doesn't quite look like cardiac or, or skeletal muscle. Okay, that's enough. Um, I hope that was interesting. I hope that was useful. That has rounded out our, um, our muscle. I don't know what we're going to do next week. Um, I'm traveling next week, so I may or may not be able to record a video. Anyway, see you soon. Mm -hmm.